Hello and welcome. I'm Frances Lippman, the founder of the Creatively United for the Planet Nonprofit Society and the coordinator and host of Creative Solutions for a New World Climate and Artists series held each Wednesday from 11 a.m. to noon. I'd like to acknowledge we are hosting this webinar on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people here on beautiful Vancouver Island for whom we give thanks for this privilege and their stewardship from time eternal. We have much to learn. Today, myself and Guy Dauncey will present a modern alphabet that artfully reimagines our future as part of the creative solutions for a new world climate and artist series. Our goal is to merge the growing public interest in finding solutions to the growing climate crisis and loss of bi biodiversity with the arts to educate, inspire, and motivate behavioral change. Guy Dauncey is a futurist, <laughs> anthropological economist, plus founder of the BC Sustainable Energy Association, co-founder of the Victoria Car Share Cooperative, and the author or co-author of 10 books, including the award-winning Cancer 101, Solutions to a Preventable Epidemic, and The Climate Challenge, 101 Solutions to Global Warning, and his recent book is Journey to the Future, A Better World is Possible, an ecotopian novel set in Vancouver in the year 2032. Guy is currently completing his next book on the economics of kindness, and his lifetime project is to rewrite the story of who we are, integrating the perennial dream of a better future into our scientific, evolutionary, and civilizational story. He and his wife, best-selling uh, author and gardening expert Carolyn Harriet, live in Yellow Point near Ladysmith on Vancouver Island. Welcome, Guy. Great to see your smiling face. Oh, thank you, Francis, and welcome Wednesday, as you say. Here we are again. <laughs> thank you. So you've got uh, a fabulous poem and uh, an A to Z format that we're both following today that uh, we're both going to present slightly differently. Why don't you tell us more about it? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I do a lot of work in, in regular nonfiction prose, and then the book I wrote was fiction, but I also enjoy poetry because it it takes away the mental controls and limitations of the mind and allows the heart to speak openly and the soul to speak openly and the passions to come out in a, in a way that sort of bypasses the right, wrong, left, right polarities of things. Mm -hmm. And um, I put this tone poem together, you know, five years ago and I brought it up to date for today. And it's just something I've, I, I find it very moving and I wanted to share it with all our viewers. Thank you. Well, we invite you to do that and hang on to your hats because Guy always has some amazing things to share. Okay, well, let's take it away then. A Modern Alphabet, a poem of deep determined restlessness as the birthing world of unknown dreams pushes harder to be born. A is for Albatross. A is for albatross, far winging freely across oceans of wonder, mating for life till they die, but their chicks have a diet of grim plastic plunder, filling their bellies with lies. Death stranded now on far distant islands, wings ne'er to fly, hearts ne'er to guide those bold ancient mariners, genes all to die. For millions of years of glorious biology, their future ends now in the junk of our age, with the white tampon applicator, plastic red lighter, broken remains of the six pack brigade. Grief is the world of the albatross bird poets, passing their wisdom from adults to wings that will never sing, hearts that will never beat, oceans fall silent. The human heart knows not the depth of our folly to empty this world of albatross wings. B is for beauty. Be is for beauty, balm for the soul, breathing its harmony into the whole. Mountain so glorious, wrapped up in ancientness, morning so intimate, mist through the dawn. Music so delicate, dancing divinity, silence so exquisite, forest so old. Nothing could heal the ache that we'd feel if beauty was gone from us, never to heal. C is for Cecil. C is for Cecil, pride of Zimbabwe, lion of the universe, proud of his own, shot by a dentist, first wounded, then blasted, then skinned for a trophy to hang on a wall. Pride of creation, pride of Earth's nation, pride of all animals, shame of our own. 
Thus now for centuries, songbirds and buffalo, rhinos and beavers killed for our gain, food for the pot or fuel for our egos, wolves, sea otters, tigers, whales. D is for diaphony. D is for diaphony, soul of divinity, echo of love that rings through creation, spark of the universe sings through all consciousness, general omnipresent, diaphanous whole. Why do we love? Why seek higher harmony? How do we know that we're part of some whole? Why Jesus, Mohammed, why Buddha, why Krishna, if not that they offer a way to come home? Surrender to emptiness, cast off the holding lines, fall in embrace of miraculous whole, give up the struggle, let go of the defending line. Love in diaphany lightens the soul. E is for energy. E is for energy, power up and get there, amazing machines that can rush around the world using fire from Earth's fossil fuels, fission and dynamite, power that can satisfy passion and fury. E is for energy, all solar energy, distant past fossils from eons ago, locked up in Earth for myriad millennia, then suddenly freed and let loose to give birth to powerful industry, steam pumps and symmetry, armies so fast they can kill from afar, then questions, then misery. Nature catastrophe, atmosphere filling with carbon catar. If ease for ecology, earth love and empathy, maybe we'll change just in time to restore the balance of carbon, balance of wisdom, put envy aside and return to the core. F is for future. F is for future, a world without fossil fuels, new solar symphony, ch symphony changing the gyre. Clean up our garbage, restore nature's harmony, offer our children the hopes they desire. F is for future without a plutocracy, no more tax havens corrupting the vine. Instead, clear democracy, justice and equity, bring change and compassion all down the line. G is for gross depletion of the planet. G is for gross depletion of the planet, the GDP all economists seek, the ripping, the tearing, the cutting and killing that brings us such wealth and nature's defeat. Gross is the weight of the rainforests leveled. Gross is the volume of metal ores mined. Gross is the sadness of species gone missing, of people long driven from ancestral lands. H is for hope. H is for hope, the fuel of our future, the magic ingredient that powers all our dreams, the purpose, the mission, the guiding commitments that helps us work miracles, helps us build teams. They say hope springs eternal, but is that really so? The teenagers I know feel worry and gray for the future they'll live in where hope's far away. Dig deep is what's needed to let hope have sway, to unearth its power and give joy to the day. Earth's problems are many and we are the cause, but we're also the answer to open the doors. I is for ice. I is for ice, melting fast, melting everywhere, dripping and flooding, rising the sea, Arctic, Antarctica, Greenland, glaciers, feeling the heat of the carbon-soaked sky. Challenging intellect, fathoming history, calling on courage to understand why. Ice in the heart leads to ice in the brain, failure to see nature's warnings in vain. Failure to comprehend, failure to apprehend causes that threaten a deep watery grave. J is for joy. J is for joy singing bright in the inner world, permanent pillar of kindness unfurled. Joy makes all nature sing. Friendship and music bring blissful communion to life's inner swirl. K is for killing. K is for killing, the inverse of kindness, the sorry debacle when all people think is to stab or to shoot, to bomb or explode, machine gun to pieces, the heart turned to cold. We've done it on battlefields, done it in darkness, done it in prison cells, done it at dawn. We've done it for love and we've done it for hatefulness, done it for greed and stupidities more. We've done it to humans, we've done it to animals, once filled with life on the hoof or the wing, packed into cages, then trucked to oblivion, every last one of them, longing to live one more day, one more night, one more dawn in this paradise. Blessed alive again, breathing the light. When will we cease? Open hearts to a better way. 
talking and sharing instead of the gun, living life without cruelty, food without misery, sharing creation under the sun. L is for love. L is for love, the ocean's vast longing, the music, the mystery, two become one. One become many, then earth become whole again, all by love's silence, burst into song. L is for love, the heart's way of saying, you're part of me, all of me. Show me the way to touch you, to care for you, treasure and share with you all of life's colors, all of life's gray. It is for love, for the deepest great mystery, spirit of everything, silent within, love that's returned to us, each, every one of us, love that embraces us, holds us as one. Open my heart springs, show me the way, oh me, show me love's mysteries, this do I pray. M is for mammoth. M is for mammoth, the last of the giant ones, roaming the earth before humans appeared, Life before danger, life before spears, life for 10 million years under the stars. What do we know, we who so lately came here onto nature's stage, hunting our way, seen by the mammoths, seen by the short-faced bears, seen by the bison rhyming the, roaming the plains? Times are accompanist here in the present, but time holds such secrets before and beyond. Time was the mammoth's friend long before we arrived, then no more. N is for nature. N is for nature, miracles everywhere, filling the planet with creeping, green creeping vines, from tiniest microbes to wandering wolverines, explosion of living wings, teeth and eyes. Starting with atoms then built into molecules, mixed with rich carbon, infused with the leaf in a future so possible, strange and improbable, bursting all over from crevice to reef. Nature's our origin, seed, life and everything, total surrounding, total within. To think we are separate, better or different, that has to be the original sin. O is for ocean. O is for ocean, deepest far water sweep, carrying memories far. Source of all life, evolution's long ancestry, all DNA began here. Ocean, deep ocean, even the waters weep, plagued by our plastic and trash, stripped of your best and left bare for the jellyfish, slave to the bankers and cash. What are we doing that we plow you so thoroughly, chasing anchovy, pollock and squid, with our trawl nets so deep and our long lines so lengthily trolling your depths for a quid? Add heat from the atmosphere, acid from carbon sphere, toxins from oil spills and tar, sick is the word that burdens your waters, urgent, the need to repair. P is for peace. P is for peace when we sleep in our beds at night, unworried by rockets or bombs. When the harvest comes in and we party so merrily, peace with our hearts and our kin. Peace for persistence that breaks down the violence, silences missiles and drones, makes people talk and begin to communicate, find common ground in our bones. Peace now for pandemic, message from nature, not to abuse what's not ours. Learn how to slow down, unfold and grow down back to community's core. Q is for quandary. Q is for quandary, challenging choices, whether to fight or to sleep, join in the effort to make this a better world or just change the channel and weep. Driving so easy, steaks are so tasty, plastic bags are oh my so convenient. But what if it's true what they say about climate and racial hate? What if we had to act now? What will my friends say? What will they think if I paint me a placard and march? If I join in the struggle, make efforts to help us grasp victory at last over money and lassitude, corruption and cruel inequality, victory over the racists and plur plutocrats, bring back democracy fast. Ours for revolution. Ask for revolution, for changing the streets, for changing our hearts and our minds, changing our vision, changing our inescapes, changing our reasoning why. Ask for re-evolution, a rolling of the soul, a turning of attitudes grey, out of the doldrums of endless dull listlessness, 
into a joy that will grow into a future so bright with the possible dreams long suppressed that now live, ending the racism, repression and ridicule, welcoming rainbows and loves. Right here over the rainbow, real dreams fly. If dreams fly over the rainbow, so then oh so shall I. If other people choose to fly beyond the rainbow, so oh so shall I. R is for race. R is also for race, for change in the rage that turns one good soul against another, for change in the fight that divides and denies us the love we could have for each other. S is for spirit. S is for spirit, the heart of who we are, the voice that speaks so quietly, the voice that speaks so far. S is for spirit, the heart of one and all, the song of the whole universe, the song of divinity's thrall. T is for truth. T is for truth. It is easy to tell it. Is it easy to tell it when comfort and lies intervene, when solid reality speaks of a tragedy waiting on millions to claim? The truth is we're cooking the planet in carbon, we're loading the oceans with grief, we're melting the ice caps and burning the forests, burdening earth, earth past belief, but the truth it is also that visions impossible now stand ready to chime, that people are ready and change is inevitable. Everything changes in time. U is for utopia. U is for utopia, the hopes that persist, tucked in the back of our minds, the dreams of what's possible, ready and practical over the rainbows and rhymes. It is common to mock it, to chuckle and denigrate, say that it never can be, but all the good changes we now see as normal were once utopian dreams. V is for victory. V is for victory, laughter and ecstasy, everyone's efforts rewarded, vision of centuries, labor of many hearts, history changed and recorded. W is for wave. W is for the wave that sweeps across continents, awakening the vision to thrive, saying now, saying come join us to millions of people who have dreamt of this day all their lives. X is for extraordinary. X is extraordinary, the efforts we make to save precious earth from the worst, to use all our brilliance to serve the emergence of this great evolutionary burst. Why is for you? Why is for you the great possibility, loving and skillful and wise? Saying, yes, I am part of this. I share in the heart of this, joining the blessed surprise. Z is for Zenith. Z is for Zenith, the moment, the far above, earth on the edge of transforming, from fossil to solar, from destroy to restoring, from wis to wisdom, to essence, to love. Wow. And there we go. Nicely done, Guy. Very beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so how did that come about? Is that, was that a dream or did you just come up with that overnight or has this just been in the making for some time? It took about three months to put that together. And it was first premiered at a, a piece called 15 Minutes of Infamy that um, happens in Nanaimo when artists and poets and musicians share 50 minutes of live performance. And um, it just grew on me, a new polish, a new polish, a new change. And then I added some stuff recently. And so, yeah, I just enjoy the molding of the words to allow that deepest feeling to come out and be there. And then you can share it with other people. It's so beautiful. I love that your work is so available and on your website, right, as well. Guy, tell us, what are you working on now? Well, a number of smaller projects, like I'm, I'm involved with the Yellow Point Ecological Society. We're sort of doing a lot of work to sort of build love of ecology and help save the forest. I've been working on initiatives to try and get a green recovery, both federally and provincially. But my big project for the last four years has been the new book I'm writing on the economics of kindness. Um, it struck me all the years I spent working on, on climate change for, for 20, 25 years and 
I always felt intimidated by this subject to the economy and the, 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 I read economics and it felt weird and bizarre and confusing. And I know that a lot of other people feel the same thing. And I, four years ago, I realized I had really had to dig into this. I had to sort of say, okay, what is it about economics? And I started reading and I've read 300 books on economics and economic history and anthropology in the last four years. And, and are, shape, those, are those a few of them on your bookshelf? Those beside are, you there? Those are them. That's the, <laughs> There's, there's, there's 400 books there, 100 of which I've started or not, not yet got into, you know, so there's a lot of, just to understand, i understand the history of economics and of history of economists and why it's all seeming so, seemingly so confusing and it's um, to understand fundamentally that the whole history of economists, economics without getting into the, the weeds here is coming from both Classical economics, going back to Adam Smith and the assumption that if we leave it to the market, everything will be fine, which was a fundamental mistake because actually what was, being, it was, what was creating change was innovation and science and technology and engineering. And then the socialist econo economists coming under Karl Marx who said, well, everything is caused by the relations of production and there's a, in, in, implacable forces of history that are changing everything, which basically deny human agency. And then the neoclassical economists in the late 1800s who wanted to sort of prove that there was no need for revolution and change by turning economics into a physics and a science. So everything behaves according to the laws of physics and the unit of human is always super rational, always super selfish and super self-interested. And then you get mathematical equations and it's nonsense. All three of them are nonsense. If you look at human behavior and take it back to anthropological origins, our origins with our primates, with the hunter-gatherers, we're fundamentally kind and cooperative and we sometimes want to be dominating and be a jerk and be self-important. And that, that, that tension between domination and cooperation is the real tension that informs our societies, not the tension between left wing and right wing. We all need businesses. We all need government. Of course we do. But we don't all need to be dominated and we do all need to cooperate. So really? it's just fascinating. Yeah, and you gave an excellent presentation on that during our Earth Fest, and that video is available on creativelyunited.org, and people just raved about it. In fact, it just went through the roof with views. It was just, people loved it. So that, yeah, that's something you can carry on. Sorry, is there more that you're... Yeah, so when, I, when, I, when I talk to ordinary people who haven't studied economics, you know, when I say that the real tension that matters is not between left wing and right wing, but between domination and cooperation, they say, yeah, that, that makes sense, because... The left-wing origins have, already, have this bizarre history in you know, 19th century socialist theory, which is now just not valid. And the right-wing origins have their you know, stuff in neoclassical and neoliberal economic theory from the late 1900s, which is also based on completely false physics, completely misunderstanding of who we are. We are not robots. Neoclassical economics believes we are robots if we all behave with super rationality and, and super self-interest. We become pure psychopaths. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe one one percent of us are psychopaths, but even they don't have an IQ of two hundred, which is what you need to fit an economist's mathematical equation. So, but then when you open it up and you realise that it's within our control, our agency, that capitalism is not an economic system; it's a cultural system informed by the values we give to it. If we change our values, if we build local cooperatives, if we build you know systems of sharing, we build community banks. We change the whole nature of it. And then we get the same at the global level. So how do we change the global treaties that, that formed a global free trade and the global banking systems? And it's all doable. What I'd really love to say is that, you know, when Guy put together that alphabet, it inspired me to put together an alphabet. And uh, it came to me overnight, just like in a dream almost, which you'll soon see it. And um, I encourage everyone to make their own alphabet. Try it with your family and friends. It's a really creative, fun project. And see what your A to Z list is. And you don't yeah. have to necessarily get into the poetry unless you want to, but you can take this in so many directions and make it a lot of fun. I want to introduce Francis, our host for this whole series for Creatively United, and before that, for a whole number of, of big public Earth Fest, Earth Week shows and presentations and before that Crances is an international award-winning photographer and her photography as you'll see in her A to Z will speak to why she won those awards. So I'm going to hand it over to you Francis, and then we'll come back and chat her afterwards. Oh you're most kind, thank you. 
All right. So we are, we are, it's like we're in coming out of a fog and finding a new direction right now. Things are like, as Guy said, we're in a really powerful, interesting time where we have an opportunity to really potentially make the most important changes that face us right now. And so um, I'm just going to, this shot is you can, anyone who's been to Tofino has seen the fog roll in would, would recognize this. A, a is to advance awareness of the world we want to live in. An attitude of gratitude can move mountains. Do you see the heart at the end of the path on the left? I just can't believe how many times I've seen hearts that just lifts my spirit, makes me live in this place of gratitude for this world around us. Banish ignorance, ego, greed, negativity, male dominance, oppression, and narcissistic thinking. C, create a kind, loving, compassionate new world order and creatively unite to draw down our carbon footprint. D, divest globally from old colonial concepts and ways of doing things from fossil fuels this shot, I love showing this to people. This is in the solutions guide, which is on creativelyunited.org. I took this photo on a tour to the top of Van City's office building on the corner of Cedar Hill Crossroad. And it's just remarkable. You come out a door onto the roof and you feel like you've just been invited into heaven. It's really remarkable to see this field of beautiful flowers, wildflowers and the bees and all the activity from nature up on a roof in the middle of the sky above all these other buildings. You don't even see telephone lines. It's really remarkable. E embrace abundance the possibility of joyous healthy individuals and communities f freedom from oppression conditioning and manipulation by others g is for gratitude give it live it and go forward with the greater good of all in mind ha Happiness. I love how it starts with an H-A. Happiness. Be it. Share it. Celebrate it. Know it's always there. And let's help each other so we can harvest the bounty that is available to us. Thanks to Mother Earth. Intuition. Can you see the eye in the tree? It's like this wise old soul. Intuition and imagination. Let it be our guide. J is for joy. Darkness disappears when the light of joy shines through. Find it. Share it. K, kindness to ourselves, to others, and the planet. With pure intention makes A to Z possible. Well, I think you can guess what L stands for here. Love. Love ourselves, love each other, and love the planet that sustains us. My friends know that I see hearts everywhere, as I mentioned earlier, in clouds, in rocks, everywhere. It's all around us. You don't have to look too hard to find it. Manifest. Manifest well. We create our reality through our thoughts and our actions. Look at all the things we can manifest. We can manifest fresh local produce. We can have beautiful streets. We could manifest homes for all. We can manifest alternative transportation systems, like biking, where you can see the sights and delight in them. N, no to negative stories and things that don't contribute to our A to Z. O, open to a field of possibilities and watch our world joyfully expand as we live as though we have one planet. And check out oneplanet.org. And P, prioritize that planet, prioritize planet Earth, our home, sustainer of all life in every decision. After all, there is no planet B. We can use our privilege to make a difference. We can ponder the loving abundance of nature and make it our passion 
to protect it in whatever way we can. And while on the letter P, check out the Pachamama Alliance and Project Drawdown. These two organizations are doing amazing things. Q, quiet our minds, calm our individual and collective souls daily with meditation and contemplation. Respect and reverence for ourselves and each other with a recollection for our past and respect for First Nations and the gifts that this planet provides. Well, S, <laughs> slow down and spend time appreciating something about nature every day. Savor each and every moment. Trust. Trust in our human potential to heal the earth and that transformative possibilities exist to that which we give our time and attention to. These guys have to trust. Every day these little guys come up, wait for the sun, look around and think, you know, is it safe? Can we go out there? Can we join the world? You. Understand a whole field of unique possibilities exist and await us. There are many pathways to solutions and many solutions exist, especially when we're in unity. V, vividly and vibrantly imagine the world you want to live in so you can help manifest it. Dream big, it's part of your vibrant vision. We can do this, warm-heartedly too. Let's welcome the changes we can do together. After all, wildly successful new ventures can come from supporting organizations like the Wildwood Ecoforestry Institute. See, you can get wild, you can put it onto a map, you can think about all the ways you can do this. X, like Guy, this is extraordinary. I'm taking, I'm cheating a little. Extraordinary possibilities can come from turning things around, like this shot. Sometimes we just need to see beyond the obvious. Do you see beyond the obvious here? If we turn it around, you can see that heart cloud in the wet sand. I can't tell you how many times people have asked me how I've done this image. <laughs> you, like Guy, said you have the power to make a difference and to create the change you want to see. Your actions now will affect tomorrow's generations. Z, Z's are important. Take time for self-renewal and give Mother Earth a rest too. Like this child, take tech breaks and enjoy the Zen of pure consciousness in harmony with nature. Well, my goodness. What a low bunch of beauty and visual feast, my goodness. That makes it, I'm sure everyone's thinking, oh, I want to grab a camera and go out and learn what Francis has learned how to do. Oh. How, how do you create such images of such beauty? You know, this is our best friend now, quite honestly. And I love that this has opened up a field of possibilities for so many people to experience Mother Nature in ways that they haven't before. Because this has the best close-up lens. This wow. goes with us almost everywhere. And I have to tell you, half those shots were done on my phone. <laughs> Plus a tripod? Uh, no. <laughs> Some of them, I mean, when it comes to when it comes to doing portraits and things like that, of course, I'm going to use that. Message, isn't that? <laughs> when we talk about when we talk about miracles, I mean, none of us understand the technology and that stuff. How you can talk to someone in Australia, capture film, capture images like that from this little thing that you know. It, that's science and technology and brilliance of a human. Life. So, Francis, how did you get into all this from being a photographer? How did you change gear and become a world changer? Oh, gosh, good question. Thank you, Guy. Well, I was seeing the world through so many different lenses, you know, from close up to telephoto. And I think that's what happens to creative people. You just start to connect the dots. And when I started to connect the dots and see what was happening in the world around me, and especially when I found out that less than 3% of all charitable giving goes to the environmental causes, 
and more than 80% goes to cure-based charities, it only made sense to me to put my efforts towards trying to switch those numbers around because healthy, happy communities begin from the ground up, not from disease down. So um, about 12 years ago, I was invited to a Sierra Club donor recognition event, which surprised me. I'm a photo I was you know, earning my income as a photographer. And I thought, well, why am I being invited to a donor recognition event? They must have the wrong person. And then I found out I was considered a top donor, despite only making a $50 a month donation. And that I also found out I was one of the youngest don donors and far from being flush with funds. So it, it shocked me. And Robert Bateman, who happened to be at that event, asked everybody <clears throat> who is looking after the environment. And he pointed his finger at every single one of us and looked each of us in the eye because there weren't that many of us there. And he said, you are. And that just gave me shivers. And that whole experience combined with um, at about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, having recently heard Ian McAllister, who happened to be one of our webinar guests two weeks ago from Pacific Wild, talk about the importance of old growth forests, bears and wolves and their place in the ecosystem, just propelled me into action to bring more awareness to those organizations and individuals doing the hero work to save our forests, our salmon, our democracy, and so much more. So I, I know it's a long answer, but Creatively United was born from that. And we have videos dating back from the beginning with all kinds of solutions and resources for dealing with the many issues. Yeah, and yeah. you found that the, the joy of organizing events that bring people together and demonstrate solutions and connect and converse and, and collaborate was one of part of your natural skills, right? Well, I never dreamed I would be doing event organizing and yeah, it just, it just evolved. I, I thought, well, what can I do? I mean, what can I do? And I think a lot of us ask ourselves that question. And so I looked at my vast network, I looked at my skills and I thought, we got to bring people together. And I guess that's what I've been doing ever since. So <laughs> bring them together around creativity and the arts and solutions and vibrancy. So you also worked on a particular project in a school some time ago that you've got some images you want to share with us from that, I think. About um, six years ago, um, myself, I'll just tell you a little background, and, and two of our former Creatively United board members, uh, videographer Dory Murphy and professional cartoonist Nelson Dewey, collaborated with Rock Heights Middle School grade six team to study a nearby Gary Oak ecosystem to help the students understand the connection importance of that system and how it related to the four R's of refusing, reducing, reusing, and recycling and the indigenous wisdom of stewardship. So um, yeah, we shared our creative skills, our equipment and experience with the students over uh, six months and documented the journey in this book, which I'm going to show you right now. So this was the book, Stepping Into Nature, Nature, which uh, is, I think it's still available from the public library. And I'm just going to share a few pages from the book, uh, because it's a really good story, actually. Um, this, it, it was wonderful. The principal was so proactive to get her students together. It, prior to this time, the former principal had not brought the school into recycling. Uh, it was the last school in School District 61 to not be recycling. And along came a new principal who was very uh, ecologically minded and thought, I've got to change this. So um, we were in the right place at the right time. And so we started with an opening ceremony where the kids made their their own drums. And um, as you can see, and we got together and, and put a real ceremony to it. And then here you can see Nelson Dewey and um, Dory behind the video camera, uh, you know, teaching the kids, sharing some of their skills, like we all brought what we had to the table. We even brought those kids on a field trip to the Heartland landfill so they could see that this former lake was now a place, the dumping ground for their garbage, so they could understand why it was important not to be leaving their garbage uh, in the forest, this nearby ecosystem, or tagging the trees and doing things that were irresponsible or you know disrespectful to the environment and our community. And here they are, you know, looking through what uh, they found in the Heartfield. In, in the Heartland landfill, I mean. And uh, there was indigenous wisdom that was brought in. So, I mean, this, this, this book just sort of documents all of that. 
And then when we turned our cameras over to these kids, wow, they just, they went nuts. They had a great time. I was a little bit nervous. Like we thought they'd use their iPhones and their iPads, but they didn't, <laughs> they didn't want that. They wanted to get their hands on our gear. And it was, you know, there's a lot of trust there to turn that over to them. But uh, these are some of the images through their eyes that I incorporated into this book. And I mean, some of them are cropped and enhanced, but boy, they, they really started to see the world. And then we thought, we'll get them to put this into practice. And we had them interview each other about what they were learning and uh, create their own videos. And one day, this is a great story. One day we, were, we went up to the, to the park and one of the kids had grabbed a branch of the tree and was sort of swinging on it. And I was like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? There could be a bird's nest in that tree. I had no idea if there was or there wasn't. But lo and behold, there was. And you can see that little hummingbird over here. And the kids just couldn't believe it. They went, there's its nest there. The kids were like, oh my gosh. Okay, we're never doing that again. We love trees. We love these birds. And we're going to be very careful now. And then it also, you know, helped them see into the heart of nature by seeing beyond the obvious. And like, look at that. It looks like a, a bear in the tree. And then we start to look closer and look at the bark and look at the sap and look at how alive this tree is and how much life is in that tree. And then we had them uh, record what they saw and, and write down, uh, you know, their experience and draw their experience and create art from their experience. And then we shared in their experience with the municipality of Esquimalt and in an Earth Day event. And then we brought that to the Creatively United Earth Day event uh, where they brought their drums, they created their own songs, they had a booth, they spoke at the opening ceremonies and made them part of the community so that they really recognized that they had a bigger role in the community than they, than they first realized. So there you go. It's fascinating. I heard um, someone say the other day with, with a concern that young people are spending so much time on their devices. If children are not exposed to nature between the age of seven and 12, they might miss it. They might grow up because during those years, the, so the, that's magic that you're conveying. Mm -hmm. they, 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 something else awakens inside them about our, we have this inherent harmony with nature. Every atom in our bodies is, the, you know, it comes from nature. We share genes with all, every creature there is on the earth, right? Isn't that the truth? And I think, you know, it wasn't until I was older that, like I said, I didn't really have my awakening until about maybe 15 years ago. And I like when I after seeing these presentations by such inspiring speakers and then watching the life in the tree out my my own windows and then finding out that 10,000 species inhabit one tree and we're just cutting them down and like like we ha have no understanding of the importance of these these beautiful I see them as creatures as sentient beings almost because they, there's like the First Nations feel that way their spirit Think of them as our, our, our family, our ancestors. Well, I, I would hope that with the difficulty schools are having with children going back to school in pandemic, stuck in the classroom and doing more outdoor education in nature, this is a great opportunity when you can do space distancing more easily and you hug a tree instead of hugging each other, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and our, our immune system depends on our exposure to, to nature as well. It's so vitally important. Yeah. And, and um, I can see that there's some questions coming in right now. Yeah, let's have five minutes of questions. Then we got another little treat lined up for the end of the show. Right? Oh, we do. So do stay on because there's some music that you're, oh, you're going to love. And I'll replay because a few people have asked here. I will replay my slideshow with this piece of music because I've been asked to. So mm -hmm. thank you. Um, so one of the questions that came in, um, this question's for you, Guy. Your poems are beautiful. H is for hope. What gives you hope that we will embrace the economics and politics of kindness in this time to avoid the crisis? I think my answer to that goes back to the 1930s. Um, the, after the great crash of 1929 and then the Great Depression, there was a realization that the old econ economics was failing, that it, brought, it hadn't got any solutions. And so a whole new approach to economics called Keynesian economics at the time, public expenditure, 
spinach was brought in and economists changed completely. And so for 30 years after that, we had very stable economic progress. And so it's when we have um, a period of instability and uncertainty, there's a lot of questioning going on around the nature of the economics at the moment and the nature of the economic solution. So the time is really ripe for a new understanding of core economics and of economic principles because it's the commitment to the old neoclassical economics that says you must be selfish, you must be self-interested, the market is the answer for everything. And people are realizing that is just so wrong. But until now, people haven't understood what the new paradigm is in economics. And it's just in between Kate Rayworth's book on donut economics and the work I'm doing and all these authors behind me that it's ready to burst. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping in my book on the economics of kindness to put it out there clearly, plus all the practical, the ways we change our approach to the economics of housing, of poverty, of manufacturing, of growing food, of inequality, of tax, of debt, all that sort of stuff. Make it understandable again. I think it's happening. It is. And we're going to have a program while you're on that note, thanks to Kathleen Code at uh, Wildwood, who's in that, if you haven't been to Wildwood, oh, Guy, tell us a little bit about Wildwood, and then I'll finish saying what I was going to say. Yeah, so Wildwood is just up the road from where I live here in Yellow Point. It's a sort of, it was a 140 acre forest that Merv, Merv Wilkinson um, acquired in the 1930s. And he decided the best thing to do was to manage the forest as if he was a farmer and harvest just the, the growth of the trees every year, not click up the whole thing. And so it is, he managed it until his death in the early part of this century. And now it's run by the Ecoforestry Institute as a, a model of, of managing a forest in a different way. And because it's, it's, it's not open to the public, but they have frequent tours and, and guided walks and stuff like that, where you can learn about the practice of ecoforestry. And as I mentioned, so Kathleen Code, who's the executive director of Wildwood, will be on our program two Wednesdays from now. And she is going to talk to the donut uh, economics and Kate Raworth's uh, principles. So you will find out how Wildwood is an example of what's possible. And it's really inspiring. Question for Guy. The two economic theories you mentioned are based mostly on profit maximization. Have you researched the differences between profit and non-profit accounting theory? No, I haven't, but it's, it's not profit that's the problem. You cannot run a business if you don't generate a surplus, because otherwise you're going to have debt. So it's what you do with the profit. Do you, do you have the profit to manage your, your normal things, or do you get the profit of the exploit of workers' wages or the, exploit, or the expense of the environment? So I, I think it's wrong to attack profit in itself as a principle. Having said that, there are nonprofits, obviously, there are social enterprises that balance profit for the enterprise with profit for the community and for nature. So I think I, I keep the word profit because I don't want to sort of turn into a Marxist. Basically, Marxism said that um, enterprise is wrong, private enterprise is wrong, the government got to control everything, and profit's a bad word. But no, if you run a business, you need a surplus to stop yourself going into debt, and debt means someone's bills are not being paid. Okay, so we're going to move on here. Um, I would love to uh, let you know that, uh, you know, Creatively United is honored, and I mean very honored, to partner with John O'Reardon of the Gale O'Reardon Climate and the Arts Legacy Series and the Ecoforestry Institute Society in presenting this program as part of our free weekly series. And Pamela Haibaugh Alonius, cellist for the past 30 years with the Lafayette String Quartet at the University of Victoria, has something special to share with us. Pam is head of UVic's cello program in the music program. And Pam is also an accomplished soloist and often plays concertos with local and international orchestras. She is married to Yari Aloni, who conducts a number of orchestras, including the Victoria Chamber Orchestra, who is one of the musical partners with Climate in the Arts. Pamela will share a special reflective piece set to a replay of My Alphabet Images, which she has pre-recorded and will tell us about now. Hello, it's an honor to be here today. I'm sorry I'm not with you in person. Um, I have been so privileged to know John and Gail O'Reardon, our late, late dear colleague and friend, um, a wonderful cellist in town that I, I'm so privileged to work with and know. Um, and as a, as a cellist, one of the most favorite pieces, and I understand from John, it was also hers, 
is a piece from the Carnival of the Animals of Saint-Saëns and it's called The Swan and it's the second to last piece of this whole wonderful um, carnival of describing animals and it, it's really quintessential for the cello and in, in great love for both what John is still doing in Gail's behalf and for all of you, um, it is my privilege to, to be able to play this uh, and um, along with all the beautiful images of the wonderful photographer Francis Littman and I leave you with that now. Thank you, Guy. Thank you, everyone, for coming on to this program. Thank you, Pamela. That was so beautiful. Bye for now.